So web quest to me, I'm, I'm breaking it up into two parts. There's the word quest. And for me, that is a journey. We as teachers will, we will be able to take our learners on a digital journey. And that digital journey is going to be providing them with a very unique and different learning opportunity in the classroom. And of course, we're all very familiar with the word web, referring to the internet. And the internet is going to assist with curating and pulling together the learning materials for the web quest. So very important. And I want to reiterate this as I go through the, the session this afternoon. A web quest is not to replace what we teach and what we do in the classroom, but to enhance the teaching and learning experience. The learners need to spend time using the information in the classroom and not spend their time looking for the information. All right, so there are a couple of components that are very important when we look at structuring a web quest. And the first one is on the left hand side and it's represented with a map. So for me, that would be either just the topic that we want to explore with the learners. That could be a driving question. That could really be anything that we state right at the beginning of the web quest to get the learners thinking about what it is that they're going to explore. The second component is time. So that's going to be dependent on how much time you as a teacher want to spend on the web quest. This could be an hour lesson. This could be a two or three lesson that you want to spend. This could be a mini project based learning. So depending on how much time you have available, the time component and the time frame is, is a very important consideration. Next up, we have a symbol of keys. So those are literally keys, but I like to think of it as the key components, that which you are going to structure and put into the web quest. Essentially, it's the learning material that the learners in your class will be exploring and grappling with during the web quest. Next up, we have also a very important component of a web quest specifically, and the magnifying glass there represents evaluating and analyzing what the learners are engaging with. And that's something we don't always get a chance to really do during a normal lesson in class, but a web quest is specifically catering for some kind of evaluation and analysis. And we'll look at all of that when we go into the live demo in a little while. And then next up on the screen is the treasure chest. So the treasure chest is the learning outcome. It is what you want at the end of your hour or two, what you would like your learners to have achieved or experienced. So for me, a web quest is the journey. There's a starting point, which is your driving question or your topic. And then you have right at the end, your, your outcome, your learning outcome. And along the way, there are these smaller tasks or missions, if you like, that the children will engage with, hopefully, to, to, to get to a successful end result. I just want to recap then. We start here with the driving question. We then have to consider very carefully the time frame because that's different for every teacher in the classroom. We then have our key components. What is it that we are going to be putting into the web quest? We need to think about some kind of analysis or evaluation and then we also have finally that that learning outcome and that's normally where I think we as teachers need to start. We need to think what it is that we want to achieve at the end and then structure sort of working backwards. And then last but not least, a web quest definitely allows the opportunity to do, to do teamwork 
and collaboration is one of those very important 21st century skills, along with communication, with creativity, with critical thinking. And a web quest can definitely be structured to enable teamwork in your classroom. All right, so the next slide deals a little bit with the advantages of WebQuest. So for me, I think this part here is probably where we teach every single day. We're teaching a particular topic or section of work. We're doing maybe a Q&A to check for whether the children remember what we said, whether there's understanding. And then normally there's this application in the last part of the lesson. But we very seldom, I'm just going to change the color. We very seldom get to do this part in a normal lesson. And this is the power of a web quest because this can definitely be structured and brought into the web quest. And then also I spoke earlier about the, the 21st century skills. This part here, the creation, how often do the children really get an opportunity to create something in a lesson? And once again, therein lies the power of a web quest. So if we look further, this is probably the part, I think personally, where the strength of a web quest lies is in, in the analysis and, ev and evaluation. All right, structuring a web quest. Let's have a look at a couple of things. The, you, need to, you need to think about the instructions that you want to give to the learners because the beauty and the magic of a web quest is that the learners can work independently. They can work at their own pace. And there are so many children, and many of you will know because you teach us in the classroom yourself, Many children get lost because they can't keep up with the pace that, that a normal lesson is going at. But a web quest allows each child to really work and, and work through the different tasks at their own pace. So instructions and task setting, very important first steps. And then, of course, the web part of web quest is where you're going to be pulling in different links and resources to enhance this learning experience for the children. Our third step is, and I spoke about this quite a lot, about the analysis and the evaluating of those resources that you have pulled into the web quest. And this is where the critical thinking comes in because the children do need to, to look at and develop their critical thinking skills. And then the fourth step is the final, it's that final outcome, that learning outcome that you start with at the beginning, that which you are thinking about. You want all the children to get to a particular point. So how do they give feedback about this? How do they reflect? And we'll look at this a little bit more closely when we go into the live demo of Wakelet. So a four step approach to a web quest. Step one, I've mentioned this before. Think of the learning outcome. What is the reason for you putting this together? What is it that you want the children to achieve at the end of your hour or two hours or whatever time frame you have set? The learning material. So when I structure a web quest, I'm thinking about all the different learning materials that I want to pull in because the children in our classes learn differently and so i believe that you need to pull in something for everybody into a web quest and again we'll look at that a little bit more closely and then step three is the actual quest so once you've got that learning outcome in mind you know what you want the children to achieve learning materials you've thought through you're then going to put the quest together and then a very important component, and this is also different for, for every teacher, different in every school, is the accessibility of the web quest. 
Fortunately, at Eshmi Primary, we have one-to-one -one devices, so that's not something that I really have to consider, but that is not the same in all schools. So the accessibility of the learning material, with this being small groups, depending on how many devices you have in the classroom, would you have to take the children to a computer lab? All those things you would have to consider because it would have a bearing on, on what your learning materials are and how long this time frame will be. All right, so we are going to dive into the Wakelet platform. We're going to do a live demo. All right, so teachers, welcome. This is, this is my Wakelet landing page. And I will share some of this with you at the end just to show you some other ways that I use Wakelet. Yours won't look like this when you sign up. It's going to look pretty blank. But as you heard, I, I said earlier, I've been using this platform for almost six years. So I've got quite a few collections and I'll run through some of them at the end just so that you can get a, another perspective and idea. Right. So once you have signed up for Wakelet, the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on create a collection. And there you have your landing page. So we're going to start firstly by giving the collection a title. So I'm going to try and keep it very simple this afternoon. I'm going to go with a very simple topic and I'm just simply going to call it uh, more about nouns. So my web quiz is going to be discovering a little bit more about nouns because I have already determined that my learners have some prior knowledge about nouns and I just want to take them on this web quest, diving a little bit deeper into nouns. I'm just going to keep this all very basic. There is an option underneath to add a description. However, I very seldom use that. At this stage, I want to just make this page look a little prettier. So I'm going to start using the button on the top right hand side called design. If, we, if I click on design, it allows me a couple of things. The first thing I can add is a cover image. And if you click on choose image, there are four options. Upload an image. So that simply means I have already uploaded an image and it's on my laptop or my computers or it's in the directory. So I can just upload it from wherever I saved it. Wakelet has this wonderful feature where they app smash with Canva. And I know there have been some Canva sessions last year. So if you have a Canva account, you can easily just click on this button. It will take you to your sign up for Canva and you can create a cover image in Canva. Once you've got that ready, you click on publish and it will embed straight into your Wakelet collection. Then there also are a couple of GIFs that you can choose if you like. You can scroll through those if you'd like to, to start off with something entertaining for the children to look at. And then Unsplash. So Unsplash is Wakelet's library of high definition images which are free for for educators to use on their Wakelet accounts. So those are the four options. I'm just going to choose something from Unsplash today. So I'm going to click on Unsplash and I'm actually just going to search for I'm just going to say fun see what I get. All right. Okay. So I'm going to just go with, um, let's see. Right. So as I'm scrolling and I'm doing this on purpose, just so that you can get an idea of, of the fantastic images that are available. Oh, well, I'm going to go with this one in neon lights. There we go. Fun. And there it has uploaded as a cover image. Then you will notice that the background is still 
pretty plain and boring and that's where the next step comes in so i'm going to background image next and i have similar options i can upload an image or i can choose from unsplash once again i'm going to choose unsplash and i'm just going to choose that image and there already you can see how we started and within two or three clicks how the page has already transformed next to both these images you will see an edit button so i can edit and change my image at any stage of the wakelet collection i can also delete the image completely and replace it with something else the other thing you can do with a cover image is that you can have it as a full which is on at the moment or i can go just half and then it reduces it like that for me so i'm actually going to keep it as a half image underneath still in the design tab underneath once you've chosen your background and cover image there are a couple of layouts available in wakelet currently the one that's highlighted is called the media layout and that simply means that every learning material whatever i pull into the collection will just flow one underneath the other compact not something that i've used often it basically takes your media layout and squashes it so it looks half the size not not one that i I can't say that I've actually used at all. Grid view. So grid view is when you want to perhaps structure a comparison and a contrast. You would have your learning materials next to each other side by side. So that could suit your purpose depending on what you want to achieve with your, your collection. The next one is mood board. So mood board looks a bit or will look at the end like a pinterest board so that wouldn't really suit the purpose of a web quest because you would have all your learning materials scattered all over the page so i wouldn't advise mood board but for other wakelet collections mood board can be huge fun for the children columns Again, not really for this purpose, but I have used columns before. For example, last year in an NS lesson, we looked at the life of an astronaut. And so we took, we, I, I, I set up the columns with different headings, what they would eat, how do they shower or bath? What does their daily routine look like? And each column had its own separate heading. So a column, depending on what, again, what your learning outcome is, can be a very useful layout. But for the purposes of this afternoon's demo, I'm just going to stick to media. Right, so I'm happy. I'm happy with the way my page is looking. I'm happy with the design. I've got my background image. I've chosen my cover image and I'm happy with the layout. So I'm going to close this and now I'm going to start looking at pulling in those resources for the web quest. All right, so, so Wakelet works a lot like Sway. It also has cards that you build on, very much like, like Sway for those of you that are familiar with Sway. So before I start pulling in resources, I'm just going to talk a little bit about these buttons where my cursor is showing. So you can absolutely curate and pull in anything that has a link into a Wakelet collection. Websites, articles, YouTube videos, PDFs, podcasts, Spotify lists, games like quizzes, Kahoot, GameKit, Literally anything with a link can be pulled into a Wakelet collection. And that's where you see, that's where that link would be pasted. Paste any web address. Next to it is the text box. So it's a little page with a pencil 
and I will be demoing that soon. I just want to go through each button first. So that's where you would add text. The next icon is for images. And once again, that is to upload any images that you have saved somewhere on your computer or laptop. The next icon represents bookmarks. So if you installed the Wakelet Chrome extension and you were browsing and you found something that you would like to at a later stage pull into a collection, you could bookmark it. And when you are ready to actually curate the collection, if you clicked on bookmarks, all those that you have saved would be ready for you to pull in. So that's really a huge time saver. Next to bookmarks is PDFs. I spoke about that earlier. So you could very easily pull in the link to a PDF into a Wakelet collection. And then they always say the, the magic lies behind three dots. But in Wakelet, there's more than nine dots here. So I'm going to click and open up this last one and just show you what you could pull in other than the ones I've already discussed into a Wakelet collection. So tweets, not really for the children, but I do also curate collections to share with staff. And so you have that ability to click on tweets. It will take you straight into a sign in of your, well, it's called X now, your X account. And you can, within a couple of seconds, pull in any tweets that you'd like to curate. Many of you might be familiar with Flip. So if you click on the Flip video icon here, again, it will take you straight into the Flip flat, uh, platform. You can sign into your account and then pull in any link from your Flip video platform. YouTube. So there are two ways to pull in a YouTube video. If you know what the video is, you know the title, you know perhaps who the author or the musician is, if you're going to pull in a song, you could search right here. So I could search, for example, I could search for nouns and it will already automatically bring up a couple of videos on YouTube about nouns. So this is one option you'll see boxes at the top. If I click and I can actually click on multiple boxes and pull them all through to my Wakelet collection within 10 or 20 seconds. So that's one option. The other option I'm going to demo when I get into the cards, I've actually opened YouTube as a tab and search that way. So you do have the two options of pulling in a YouTube video. So back to where the magic lies here. So I think most of us are either we have a Google Drive at school or we have a OneDrive at school. Some of us might have both. So anything that you have saved in one of these drives can be pulled into a Wakelet collection. So maybe you have a Word document saved or you have an image saved or a PDF or anything else that you want to bring into your web quest you can simply access it by clicking on one of these two, signing in, and it will embed straight into the Wakelet collection. And then the last option, I'm not sure how many teachers uh, are familiar with or have Adobe Express accounts. I personally don't have one. I tend to do everything in Canva, but Adobe Express has also come alongside uh, as a partner as an app smashing partner with Wakelet. All right, so now that I've shown you what is available, let me start adding some of these resources. Right, so I'm not sure about the other teachers out there, but if I think about the topic nouns, many of my lessons, I actually like to start with a quizzes or a Kahoot just to determine where the learners are at and for me engagement is critical and so i know that i'm going to hook them straight away if i start off with the quizzes so i'm going to pull in a link from a quizzes 
which I already have open on the screen. So I already have my quizzes account ready to go. I've got something on common and proper nouns. So I would click, although I'm not assigning it for homework, but this is where I would access the link. So I'm going to click on assign for homework. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to click on assign. And there is the link. So I'm going to copy the link to the quizzes. I'm going to go back and open my Wakelet. And right here, I'm going to control V for paste. And there it has embedded the link to that particular quizzes. So my quizzes is ready to go. I have the ability in Wakelet to edit this card, just like you can do in Sway. So here are the three buttons. And under the three buttons, I have a couple of options. I am going to demo the editing because I just want to show you how I would customize this particular card for my learners. You also have the ability right at the end to move the cards around. They can drop right to the bottom. So you can restructure the order as you see fit because sometimes when we get to the end and we look through it we might think that a particular activity needs to move up or down and so this is one way to do it i could save this i don't really use that option and if i really don't want the quizzes at all maybe want to put another one in i simply can delete it so I am going to just show you how i would edit this card because at the moment it just says click the link to join now so I would click on edit and there you see it says quizzes you've been invited to a quizzes activity I might want to change this and say something like an instruction please complete this activity for example and you can see it's saving. So Wakelet is saving as you would. So no worries that you're going to lose anything. As long as you have Wi-Fi on, you are good to go. So I'm going to close that. And it should, it should pull through. I might just have to, I might just have to refresh. I see it hasn't done that. Okay, so might just be connectivity. I see it hasn't pulled through. Um, let me try one more time. Edit. Okay, there we go. Let's make the titles here. Something as well. Maybe here. I just want to say good luck. save close the card and there you go it has pulled through please complete this activity good luck so that is how i would start my web, my web quest with a quizzes so the next thing i want to do is i want to add another card so i'm going to look for this blue plus sign or symbol at the bottom of my first card so when i click on that it's again going to open another card with the same icons, right? We want to work from the top down. So we want to add, add after each card. So I think at this point, um, as I've thought through my lesson, I would like to next add perhaps a poster of nouns for my learners to study or to have a look at. So because I am giving this self-paced web quest, and I want to be the facilitator walking around, I am going to give an instruction to the learners. So this is where I'm going to use my text box. So when I click on that first icon, a text box will open like this. Not many options, but I think it's doable. It does give you the options for bold, italic, underline, two, two different sizes of heading, You've got some alignment options and also bullet points and numbering and a link. So doable, not, not the greatest selection, but it, it will suit the purpose of what, of what you would like to achieve. 
So I'm going to give the children an instruction and I'm going to ask them to, to look at the poster below and and this you would obviously you know your learners so you would be able to customize this instruction this might be a little bit too easy for grade sixes and sevens i teach grade five so i think this will be fine for them look at the person below and maybe i'll ask the learners and summarize the type of noun okay i was just now show off my typing skills here Right, so that, that, that could be an instruction. You would know your children best. And I'm just going to highlight this, put it in bold. Let me just show you what the two headings are. So heading one will give me that kind of looks a little bit bigger. Heading two, a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go with heading one. I'm also going to choose alignment, center alignment, and close the text box. And there you go. There's my instruction, nice and big, so the children can follow this on their own with me, the teacher, just walking around and making sure that they are on track and that they do understand what to do. So the next thing, I've asked him to study the poster. So the next thing I'm going to pull through is a poster about nouns. So as I said earlier, underneath that, I want to add by clicking on the blue plus sign and I want to open maybe some Google images. And let me see, this would again be dependent on which grade you teach, how much information you'd like to share at this stage. I think I'm going to just go with this one, keep it nice and simple, common and proper nouns. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy the image, go back to my collection and over here, Control B for paste. And please work with me now. And there you go. Just like that, I have embedded that poster straight into my Wakelet collection. All right, so I have been, right, so we've done a quizzes. Got them engaged, we've got them excited now, hopefully. They now looking at the poster, but still individually. This is still individually. We'll bring in some collaboration a little bit later. Now, like I'm sure most teachers out there, our children love music. I love music. I can't teach without music. So I think at this point, I would like to bring in a song about nouns. And so that's going to be my next card. I'm going to click on the plus sign. And as I said earlier, I'm going to pull it in from YouTube. If I know what the video is, I simply click at the end here and click on YouTube, put a search in for nouns or noun song. And if I recognize the video I'm looking for, I simply click on the box above and it will embed straight into my Wakelet collection. What I'm going to do though, I'm going to go the other route and I'm going to open Google and I'm going to search for, it's this one, best noun song ever. I'm going to right click on the title, copy the link address, return to my Wakelet, and here we are, can paste the web address, control V, and my noun song embeds straight into my Wakelet collection within a couple of seconds. And the beautiful thing about embedding in Wakelet, especially with videos, is that I can play this video straight into Wakelet. So if I clicked on this, I can play it. No advertisements. I can go full screen with this as well. So that is absolutely wonderful. I know with videos, teachers, we don't want those ads on the side and all the other noise around videos. The children can play their YouTube videos straight inside of the Wakelet collections and they can even go full screen and return. All right. Melissa? Sorry, Ms. Smith. Yes. Sorry, I've just 
just got a question that blue plus button can i yes. also use it as a new if i want to open a new folder no uh, yes well yes you would you would if you clicked on it a folder as in from a google drive or a OneDrive. yes so yes. i can use so, it to open a new folder correct yes correct Thank you. all right so my song is added now my class is awake again just in case i've gone to sleep and the next thing that i want to bring in is i actually want to bring in that evaluation analysis aspect of a web quest because now i've exposed them to a poster i've also given them a chance to listen to a song and th at this point i also want to bring in collaboration in the classroom i'm going to give them the following instruction so i'm heading over to my text box once again because remember this is self-paced we want the learners to work through this on their own with the teacher just facilitating so i'm going to give the following instruction something like discuss with a partner and again teachers this is however you structure your your group work perhaps with a partner or a small group predetermined discuss with a partner or, or or in a small group and compare the poster the poster and the song so i'm going to leave it just like that maybe just use a different heading and post so at this point i'm pulling through that instruction so at this point i want my learners to either in a small group or just with a partner do a comparison of which one they thought was better which one gave them more information about nouns for them to discuss and then you could stop and have feedback or you can leave it right to the end however you wish to structure this so there's a little bit a little bit of evaluating and and analyzing right now given the children quite a bit of input about nouns at this stage so what I like to do almost as an exit ticket is I, at this stage, would like them to go back to that quizzes. And I'm not sure if your, your learners are like mine colleagues, but my learners don't mind doing the same quizzes three or four times in a lesson. As long as they can play a game, they are happy. So I would at this stage probably add a card and ask them to go and do that quizzes again to see how the marks perhaps increase hopefully it does so i would pull in my quizzes here again copy the link back to my wakelet and simply click there Control v and pull the card in there again right moving on to the end so i, I don't want to bombard um, the teachers out there with too many things because I think I've already mentioned all the things that can go into a web quest and I do want to have a little bit of time at the end just to show you the possibilities of Wakelet besides web quests. So I'm at this point going to move to the reflection and for me this this is critical because at this point I would like the learners in my class to create something. I want their creativity to give them the opportunity to be creative. So I'm going to be ending the structure of my web quest with something that they have to create in Flip. So I've decided, remember right at the beginning, I know what my learning outcome is and I've worked backwards. Small missions on this quest. The children have already completed three or four smaller missions. And then now it's all going to culminate into what I want them to create. 
because we lately it's the buzzword right 21st century skills and also that we've we've got to be mindful as we're moving into bringing digital technology into the classroom that the children sitting in front of us need to be more content creators than content consumers so yes we have to give them a little bit of content to give them context but at the end of the day the children really need to be creating more than just sitting there passively and hopefully taking in something from from the lesson so i've mentioned that i want to bring my web quest to an end by giving the children a flip topic now once again teachers this is entirely up to you this can be done individually i find that working with the partner especially with the grade fives they prefer they are more confident then to to create something in flips uh, uh, flip is a video response tool i'm obviously not doing flip this afternoon so, so i'm not going to go into great detail but i know there's a session about flip um, so i'm going to use flip for my creation tool. So I'm going to open my Flip account and I have already created this topic in which the learners are going to create something about what they've understood about nouns. How well do you understand proper and common nouns? To the right of the screen is the share button. Because remember, I, I want to pull everything into a wakelet. I don't want the children to exit wakelet and have to go into Flip. I don't want the children exiting Wakelet and opening Google to go into YouTube. This is the beauty of Wakelet, is that in 20 to 30 minutes, you can curate every single activity resource into, into one collection, which the children can access. So there's the share button. There is the link to my Flip topic. I'm going to copy the link. I'm going back to my wakelet. I'm opening a new card and I'm going to control V and bring in that topic from Flip. And there it is. I can customize this. I can click on edit and I can give this a specific instruction, although the Flip topic already has an instruction. So the children would click on this link and it would take them straight into that flip topic ready for them to record. They don't have to leave Wakelet at any point. Everything is curated within this one collection. Right. So that is about it for curating resources. I know that our next step is to show you how to share this. Melissa, any questions or comments at the stage before I show the teachers how to share Wakelet? Hi, ma'am. None so far, but, um, <laughs> but I have unmuted their microphone. So if they do want to ask a question, they can do so. Right. Thank you. All right. So now I'm happy. I have thought this through. I know all the activities that I wanted to include in my web quest. I'm just going to scroll back through. I really have a variety here of curated links that will hopefully enhance the learning experience for the children. There is something here for everyone. And there's really the, the variety is what should speak to the children. So I started with my quizzes just to see where the children are at. I've given an instruction about what to do with the poster below. I've embedded a noun song. I've given them collaboration. You remember when I was sharing the PowerPoint, the teamwork aspect of a web quest is important because it develops other skills, which are not being developed when the children are working on their own. It saves time, especially if this is an hour lesson, working with someone is going to save time as well. I've given instruction of what I'd like them to do for evaluation and analysis. I've again put in my quizzes as an exit ticket to see what they have gained 
from the web quest so far. And right at the end, I've given them the instruction to record and to reflect on what they've learned through this web quest. Right, so that's my web quest all ready to go. Now I need to share it with the learners. And that's going to depend on whether you are going to share it. Maybe there aren't devices in the classroom. Maybe this is just going to be projected on the screen in the classroom. But if the children do have access to devices or to the computer lab, then they need they would need access to it. So I am going to click on the share button and just explain this. It's not difficult at all, but let me just show you what that looks like. So now I'm ready to share. I'm only going to focus on the share button. The publish is for if you, once you have a Wakelet account and you decide to have a public profile and you would like to share some of your collections with everyone out there, you are then able to publish this particular web quest. So for the purposes of today's session, I'm just going to focus on the sharing. Right, so when we move down, the first option is over here where it says no access. As you can see below, everything is grayed out. So you need to click on where it says no access. And this is where you have the option of where the learners can only view. They can't engage with this web quest. They can't add things. They can't change and delete the, the resources that you curated. So once I click on can view, you'll see that the icon there has changed, the little eye, and immediately I have some options here. I can copy this link and paste it in my LMS, which is, could be Teams or Schoology or Canvas or Google Classroom or email. If you want to share it with a colleague, that's an option. QR code. I could put a QR code on the screen. Learners can scan this. I can put it into a document. I can even put it into an LMS. There's the Teams option, and there's your Google Classroom option. And it will put that link, the link to this web quest, straight into your LMS. And that, that really is the sharing. Um, as you can see, I'm not going to speak about the next option anyone that you can invite to collaborate as you see on the left hand side that is only if you have one of the wakelet pro accounts but on the free account this is not an option so this is where you need to share teachers either copy the link just change the view or straight into an lms all right i'm going to close that box because i'm not going to share it at the moment while I am at the top here, the only icon I didn't talk about or open were the three dots next to design. So right at the end, there are a couple of options. You can make a copy of this web quest if you would like to. It will actually put another copy into your or on your home page. You could move this collection if you have perhaps created folders, you could move it into a folder. And at any stage, if you wish to delete this, you have that option under those three dots. All right, so that is the web quest part of it done, but I really would like to show you what else, the endless possibilities of Wakelet as a digital tool in the classroom. So I'm just going to go back to my home page right and there you will see on the far left hand side there is my web quest more about nouns all right so as i scroll through so something new that we're actually doing this year um i've just recently been appointed if you may um as a, the head or the coordinator of digital integration at my school and so what i've done here is and we haven't put anything into it is I have created for each grade 
a digital integration portfolio. So teachers will be sharing photographs of digital integration with their learners. And I will then be pulling those into the collections that you see here in front of you. And at any stage, if the principal or the IT department or just a colleague would like to have a look at this, I simply share the link with them within 10 or 20 seconds. Here you see some of the, of the other grades. Um, so with my digital integration team, we've been talking a lot lately about the SAMA model. I know that's also quite a buzzword in the digital technology space. And this collection, I can open it for you. I actually curated a whole lot of videos and links and examples. This, by the way, uh, I created this in Canva and then just published it straight into my Wakelet. And so with I shared one link and my colleagues have everything about Summer Model right at their fingertips to watch whenever they have the time. So that is my Summer Model Wakelet. Um, I even have one for maths resources. So I just pull in different links, videos, images into a Wakelet collection, which I share with the learners or with colleagues, depending on the content. 